I'm with Donnie Seifer, executive officer of NASDAQ and co-owner of Seifer Automotive, Wheat, Wheat, Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Donnie? Thank you. Oh, nice to have you here, man. Rob Rossell, Family Auto Service in Las Mesa, California, San Diego area. Yes. Thanks. Four shop owner and uh, author of Addicted to Life. How I went from homeless to extraordinary success and happiness in a short period of time. We did an episode on addiction with Rob. Uh, yeah. Episode one, 100, uh, Town Hall 102. Thank you so much for that. It was fabulous. And he's also here uh, with his book. And uh, Mark Roberts is here. I love it. Serial entrepreneur. And managing partner at Shirts Auto Service. So when he came in a little earlier, he was telling me all the things he has going on. I don't know where you get your energy or your or your stuff, man. But so our topic is how to handle the overload of information, this entire workload that we have in front of us, and all the things that we have to do and learn. And Donnie, you brought me this topic. So, oh, is that me? <laughs> yeah, Donnie. Donnie's booth is in here, so he's he's going to be texting. And I'm I'm trying not to. I think we finally have it under control. Oh, good for you. Don't ever put in the name of your business same day if it's actually not true. Because <laughs> oh. most sign companies, that's exactly what the story is. Oh, I get it. That's funny. That's Fast, good. not true. No, not true. Well, uh, you know, when, when, when you said to me, hey, why don't, we, why don't we get together and talk about, you know, handling the work overload, and that's when I started to realize, you're buried. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's get into this, guys, because I think each and every one of us that's in business today, and God help the service professional and all that we have to learn and all that we have to do. Um, Donnie, why was this a subject you said we need to cover? Well, I find that a lot of the folks that I interface with are always complaining that they're just, I, I can't get anything done because there's so much coming at me. And I've been running five projects simultaneously for NASDAQ. And I find that e even with my parents raising me to manage projects, I'm still saying, squirrel, squirrel. Oh, I got to go over there. I got to go over there. And, and so I've really had to go back and look at all of my processes again and say, how do I define these tighter and how do I keep myself on point? So I thought it would be a good topic for you. I love the word tighter. How do I make them tighter? I mean, to me, that's, an, that's a hard discipline. Oh, it's hard just to keep your mind on things, you know, particularly when you've got things that are, they're pressing and, and they're somebody else's yeah. pressing thing and you know, you're in customer service and you want to help those people. And you're like, I really want to help you, but I got to finish this first. So you said to me, how, when, and how long are the best ways to learn new things? What's your discipline? Well, so I learned, I was a musician by trade initially. And uh, I went to a school in LA, it was called Musicians Institute. And they only took a handful of guitar players every year. So it was real hard to get into. And one of the things that they taught us right from the beginning was, and this is way back in the dark ages, right? This was like 83. They, um, they taught us that you can only focus for so long. And so therefore, if you're trying to practice something longer than a short period of time, depending on your own personal attention span, yeah. you're wasting your time. Because all you're doing now is you're maybe doing muscle memory type of things, but you're not really learning. And unfortunately, our entire industry is built around these three hour classes that the guys are gone. I mean, they're, they're gone after about an hour. This is the perfect topic to think about being here at Vision, Mark. You've attended some classes. Yes. Um, <laughs> are you on overload? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you taken any notes? Um, I have taken some notes, and I really thought I was going to take some notes here, but then I remembered that, hey, you already do all that for us, so I don't need to. You put me in here with these heavyweights. That's funny. So, I'm like the tadpole. Yeah. You know, and this the tadpole, thing. yeah, yeah. yeah and, tadpole. and and said I'm gonna just make notes. So okay, you took notes. Do you just say, "Wow, I feel great. I have a tablet full of notes. Let me take that file, put it in the cabinet, and maybe one day I'll remember." Oh, we talked about that at Vision 2019. Or do you go back and you make a to-do list of the the most important things you take away? Right. Well, you know, my I guess my attendance here this this year is a little bit different because I'm taking nothing but technical classes. And it's not, it's not that I need to learn how to do that. It's not that I'm going to go fix a car. It's more of me and being the visionary and really looking at, okay, well, I'm gonna, I need to get a little, I need to understand this a little bit more so that I can understand where we need to send, yeah. you know, where we need to be working on, yeah. um, you know, what our techs need to be working on and, and what I need to be thinking about as, 
as the owner and with growth plans. So here, you're an owner that hasn't teched in a long time, or have you ever teched? Uh, it's been a long, long right, time. A long, long time. <laughs> so here's a guy who's an owner who's going to tech classes to be sure that the team under you and the team that you lead and manage is getting the right training. And and the, you're, the, listen, boss, I want to go to this class. No, you don't. You want to go to this one. Right. <laughs> Because, because you were there. Um, Rob, uh, four shops, how are you leading and managing your overload? You know, one of the tricks, and I have sat in, in a number of classes while I've been here, one of the tricks that I do is, well, two, two tricks I'll talk about. One is, if I take, I take a lot of notes, but I read my notes the following day because it's so, inf so much yeah. information overload. And if it's either on the flight home, the drive, if my wife is driving, I will really absorb those notes. But another trick is there's many, many aha moments throughout a seminar. Mm -hmm. I will flip my pad, whatever pad I'm working on, to the last page, and I will start with number one. And it's amazing, a two- or three-day event, I'll have 127 things that are aha moments of things that I want to do. or Some, some of them are just reminders of things that I thought that, I, I've, that have fell in, fallen to the, the wayside from another event. And then when I get home, I will take three to five of those 127 and I will work on those diligently until they're done or stalled before I move on to any other things on the list. Great, great, great idea. Did you ever hear of Cornell Notes? Anyone? I have heard of them. I'm have not familiar heard? with them. Uh, and I believe it was at Cornell where this was kind of discovered by a professor. And I, I do a modified version of that. I take a big pad and I'm going to take notes. I'm not, I may not take electronic notes. In, in, the three inches on the side of the pad, draw a line. Take the notes of the class that, you know, the, the most important points you're thinking about. And while your mind is traveling to places because you're hearing things and you say, ooh, interesting, I could do this in my business, you go to the right-hand column and you put yourself maybe an icon. You know, a, a music note? That's a note to myself <laughs> that I think I want to take that theory and put this over there. Oh, this is a great idea. It's not, it's not the piece from the, the, the class, the, the, the pointer, but it's how I interpreted that pointer. And then I draw a little light bulb, and that's an idea. So I pull notes and ideas from the, from the basic of the class. And it's a modified version of Cornell notes. Fantastic I think it's, it's, a, it's a cool way, yeah. to, cool way to do something like that. So that when you go back into your notes, the first place that I would look would be the right side okay. column. Well, so if I can, I'd like to add on to what Rob said. I take all of my class notes in my phone or the iOS overall, you know, okay. whatever I'm using, because I do the same thing. I go back and reread my notes. I'm learning to speak Korean right now for entertainment. I, and, and so wow. the words that I'm trying to learn are in my notes. And so I go back and review those on a regular basis because I don't have a day-to-day -day interaction with a Korean speaker. So it takes longer to learn. Sure. And so one of the things that I learned about speaking another language is no different than what we do when we're trying to handle all of this overload. And one of the things it says is that you need to do brain soaking. Right? What's that? Brain soaking yeah. is when you spend a lot of time listening to a specific thing. So even if you don't get it at first, it starts to make sense as you yeah. brain soak it. But the other thing that this guy, and this was a TED talk I, I watched mm -hmm. on this whole overload thing, right? And the other thing this guy said was, if you, in, if you basically dump yourself into an environment where you don't understand a word they say, and you know, I'm talking about a foreign language, but I think it's true because what we do to cars is often a foreign language to people, right? Sure. Um, so if you just dump yourself into it and you don't understand any of it, you won't win. But if you start out by doing something that you can get pieces of it, your brain starts connecting the dots. And so that, I just, I wanted to throw that out because I think Rob's spot on. That's really been helpful for me. And I go back and look at my notes from a class I've been at. Because for me, having to go find notes doesn't work. Well, so you know, thank you for breaking the code for so many yeah. of us that's continue to write. And even though the writing happens to be my method, because when I write, I learn. Right. That, that to me was always my connection. And, uh, and I've not been able to adopt electronic note-taking yet. I actually tried at, at um, uh, cars in Detroit, uh, the connected cars thing in Detroit a while back. I tried, yeah. and uh, I forgot where I filed them. Yeah, I'm a little old school. <laughs> I'm old school as well. I'm still handwriting my notes. However, I have been brought into the next century with Evernote, and I do take oh, photos yeah. of my notes and organize <laughs> yeah. them by category so there I can refer I'm back a, to them. I'm, I'm big in Evernote. Yeah, I've yeah. got a huge, huge Evernote for years. Awesome. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's, been, it's been great. 
Um, Rob, do you have to prioritize in order to get things done? Yes. I'm not Rob. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say Rob? <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant Mark. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Thanks. when you're looking at me, I figure you're talking to me. Well, and it's okay because yeah. if you look at it from the camera's yeah. point of view, you have no he idea was looking at Rob when he said yeah, it. That's right. <laughs> well, <laughs> you have no idea who he's looking at. But, um, I yeah, you do. I mean, it really goes back to just taking the big things. It, you know, like I know the projects I'm working on, that's the most important yeah. thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do. And, and, yeah, there's a ton of, ton of things that I, I don't get done, but it's I'm going to get the big things done. Um, but yeah, it, it is about prioritization because right. I'm the, I got the same problem as squirrel because they just labeled me in the shop. I just found out is that my wife and my partners and stuff all agree that I have ADD. So, yeah. <laughs> which which let's conclusion. talk about before this is yeah. over. Go ahead. Because yeah. most of the best people in our industry are ADD or ADHD. That's right. The only reason they are as successful as they are is because they are able to very rapidly change directions and do something. So if you learn to harness that and you learn to say, okay, I can do that, but then you also have to have a plan so that you do do that, there's nobody that's going to beat you. That's right. That's right. Uh, I'm, I'm maybe guilty as charged too. So prioritizing, Rob, did I do this right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you, go. Um, you have a special day of the week that you carve out and say, hey, I'm going to do some of the tough stuff this day. I do. Even being at the, uh, I, I used to be a district manager. I've hired one now. So I'm not in the shops day to day and my message gets sent to the troops through the one guy now. But uh, I still have, so as I work on my business, I still have days where I stay at home. Uh, for me, that's Tuesday. It's called working on a Tuesday. I learned it from somebody else. I'm not a genius, but that's an uninterrupted day where people know don't call me, don't text me unless it's an absolute 911 so I can focus on those things that only I can do so I can further along my business. W-O-I-T. Yes, sir. Work on it Tuesday. Yes, sir. And you work remotely. I do. Because if I'm in the office, there's the squirrel comes. We all know the squirrel comes. And people forget. They knock on the door when it says do not disturb anyways. That, that happens to all of us, right? So if I'm not there, and in their mind, I'm not there. Okay, overload. Is there a way, Donnie, to try to filter uh, the, the information that you're getting? Filter file? Do you have a method? Uh, well, I have a sort of a series of internal filters that I apply. And the first and the most important one is will it matter tomorrow? That's good. If this yeah. isn't going to make any difference and this thing's going to blow over by tomorrow, I'm not going to spend time on it. I'm just going to put it away. Even if I'm emotionally involved with it, it's like, why am I going to spend time responding to this? I think, I think he brings up a great point. Sometimes we, we make things so critical right. and it just needs a blow and off period. Yeah. For everybody involved, everybody who's on the email That's stream. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. What do you do to prioritize? I have my list. Am I using an app? Okay. Yeah. You, what do you use? Remember the milk. Remember the milk. Yeah. Cool. I've so never used that. It's just a to-do list, and it uh, will roll stuff over as I don't get it done. Because I'm not good at just writing. I've, I've done the writing part, and I'm just not. I don't want to carry a notebook with me or a pad with me. Yeah. It's I want it. You know, I want it on my devices, and and I and and one of the challenges that this, this your your podcast is probably the best tool in the industry without a doubt but it's also one of the toughest tools in the industry just because every time i listen to it i've got five new to do's yeah every time i listen to it it's like oh my goodness and and so i'll go on these you know i'll get behind on them and you know if i got a trip i'm going to listen to five podcasts and you know and i'm having to stop and make some notes for to do's and um, it's like, oh, I, I thought I had it together till I listened to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Carm's brain trust, right? Yeah, Car Carm's brain trust. Carmelized. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> all, all your terms. Yeah, and, yeah caramelized. I know. Yeah, well, but, th thank you. Thank you for that. And, and you're right to a point. And, you know, someone said the other day on one of the shows, they said, you know what? There's thousands and thousands of ways to run a business. Mm -hmm. And he says, so are you doing it your way? Are you doing it right? Can I confirm or affirm that what I'm doing is right? And every time they hear someone on the show come in as a shop owner and say, well, this is how I do it. In many cases, it just affirms if the it, it, yeah. Ben, bottom line is strong. Margins are right. Culture is great. You know, everything is working. The marketing is right. Now you're just tweaking and, and, and you're lifting yes. yourself and you, 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 you don't necessarily change, but you tweak. 
I think you're in constant tweak mode. Best practices. Really looking at what is what are the best practices? Uh, unless major surgery is necessary, yeah. and and a lot of people listen for those ideas and try to formulate how they're going to fix themselves. But then again, guys. I can't go without saying this, the, the business coach and the consultant really have been one of the most critical parts of our industry in moving things forward. Do you have a yeah. coach? Yes, I do. Yeah. I have numerous coaches, actually. Yeah, you do, yeah. don't In you? different categories. Some are non-industry specific, some are industry specific. I've had a speaking coach in the past. I've had num numerous coaches, and uh, it's changed my world. Absolutely. That's how you go from homeless, toothless, and unemployable to multiple shop owner and real estate uh, entrepreneur, as well as the other things that my wife and I do. Hey, while you're here, um, I, um, um, I, I, wanna, I want you to talk about this great, uh, you, you told me, you, you wrote something that I thought was fabulous for this show. And I want to tell you, it's about delegating your responsibilities. And I learned many years ago that if you can find someone to do a task better than you, cheaper than you, and faster than you, delegate. Rob's talking point was he put, he put dollars and cents to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And explain that theory. You know, I learned a long time ago that I can figure anything out if there's enough time. And the challenge is, is why would I have to do that? Why should I do that? If it's less than $50 an hour, then I should be subbing that out to an outside vendor or finding somebody that I can hire in-house that can really do, not only do that task, but do it much better than I'm ever going to figure out how to do it. So it's pretty important to know where that line is at some point in time. And that's where the whole squirrel thing comes in as well. That 127 tasks that I might have as ahas during that two or three day event, part of that list, half of it goes to somebody else as I go and make, go to and make my three to five items because I don't need to do that stuff. I just need to make sure it gets done. Right. Yeah. What do you think of that theory? I mean, you gotta, you gotta delegate it where you, I think you said, if you know, your, your value is 500 bucks an hour. That's right. That's a great book. It's called time really is money. Yeah. That's where, that's where I learned that theory from. Yeah. We should, we as business owners and entrepreneurs should be spending our time on $5,000 an hour stuff, not $10 an hour stuff. Right. And, and we're all going to spend our time on $10 an hour stuff from time <laughs> to time, but like it or not. Well, because you like to do it man. Well, we need or it's problem. easy and it's instant in 30 seconds. I could fix this. Right. That's right. That's or we're right. the mindset that if I want to get something done, I have to do it myself. That's right. I, can oh. that, I think that's a problem for a lot of us. Yes. I don't have that. Yeah, well, that, that goes back to AD. D yeah, or ADHD. I can do that really fast. I'm not, yeah, yeah, no I'm problem. not gonna farm that. Listen, I could do this thing right away. Why delegate it? Why forward the email to someone to do it when the emails are gonna take five minutes to get there? They're gonna have to schedule it for ten and we're fifty minutes down the road and this should be done right now. <laughs> you bet. So fifty dollars an hour creates you a hundred grand. <laughs> $500 an hour creates you 750 grand. Which would you rather have at the end of the year? You may not realize it'll ever come in. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I mean, that, that deal may not close. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, anyway, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's really crazy. Hey, uh, I forgot to give some uh, high fives to our sponsor that makes the Town Hall Academy free each and every week, Jasper Engines and Transmissions. You know, at Jasper Engines, quality and customer service is their number one goal. They're associates. It's an associate-owned company. They take pride in their work. And it shows in the quality drivetrain products they produce. Their quality and customer service has kept them growing for 76 years. Visit jasperengines.com. Um, wow, guys. Uh, Donnie, you talked about neural pathways. Tell me, bring me, bring me down to earth, but help me understand that. <laughs> sure. Well, it, it's not actually as hard as it sounds. So in our brain, when we start to do something, it takes a certain number of repetitions. Um, you know, that's where Lent came around, right? to develop a new habit, it takes a certain number of weeks to ah, yes. get good at. Well, that's, you're developing a neural pathway or a behavior in, in doing that. And a lot of what happens with us, if we stop learning, and I'm sure if you haven't listened to Jeff Peavy on one of these things, just listen to that and that's oh, yeah. my reference. Okay, great. Right? Yeah. So if you stop learning, these things that you're already good at, they go away and you can't do them anymore. Um, I've seen technicians who were experts who don't go to school anymore and they can't do something that they were perfect at 10 years ago. Yeah. And so when, when a neural pathway starts to effectively get grass growing over it because no one's using it anymore, <laughs> it affects a whole nother section of the brain that is storing other information that you might need that makes you good. So 
it, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go do that operation. You don't have to put a fuel injector in an old GMC diesel to actually open that back up, but you have to do something with your brain that taps into that area and keeps all of that memory open to you. That's and that's sort of it in a nutshell, how the, how the neural pathway piece works. But if you don't learn, you do lose it. This is not right, like riding a bike. You, and actually you lose riding a bike too, because that's a neural pathway. It is. So, so don't let the grass grow over it. Right. Be a perpetual student, Absolutely. constantly learn, listen to audiobooks, listen to podcasts, read books, uh, network, which is frankly one of the best neural pathway stimulators that exists is your interaction with another live human being. We can't text them. Pardon? No, <laughs> no you, Not can't, as good. you can't text them. Although that's becoming the preferred way, isn't it? Oh, sure it's, is. it's these things that we've got covered up right now yeah. that actually hit the neural pathway much harder than this does. Okay. It's the old uh, listening. You know, I'll tell you, there's so much value in learning how to be a, an active listener and a good listener. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Exercise, Mark, is that going to help the neural pathway thing? It wow. sounds awesome. I, when he, went, when he read, <laughs> put that in there, I'm like, I want to hear what he has to say. Well, it's just huge. Yeah. I mean, it's, <clears throat> I wish I would have started exercising much earlier in life. And, and I've only done it for probably the last seven years. And, and now I'm just committed to it. And I don't, I'm, you know, obviously you can tell I don't pump iron, um, but it's really more, I do a lot of cardio stuff and, and it just clears my head. And so there for a while I was running, I got challenged to run a half marathon and never run, you know, half a mile in my life and got challenged to do it for a, for a ministry. And I did it and it, it was fantastic. And so then I said, oh, I'm going to do it again the next year. And I was getting up every morning, 4.30, and going running five miles. And, and, and through that, it, I just said, oh, gosh, I feel so much better. My head's clear. I can tackle just about any type of challenge that comes before me. Um, you know, my head's clear. And so I, it's on my calendar. I work out from 4.30 to 5.30 every Tuesday and Thursday with a group. And so there's a little bit of accountability. Morning or afternoon? Afternoon. Okay. Afternoon. And... I just do it. And my wife gets mad because we'll have an event. And I said, well, we're going to be a little late. She goes, well, just don't go to your workout. I'm like, well, unlike you, sweetheart, I'm committed to my workout. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh -oh. Oh. Yeah. That, that just got recorded. That okay. Got recorded. Let yeah. us, let That's us good. put this in perspective. The, the toughest thing, I mean, I'm talking to an expert over yeah. here, the toughest thing to get a, a regiment of exercise that that's the commitment. Take us back to the day that you said, I'm finally going to do this because I'm looking for some help in this department. I need, I need a, a, some kind of motivator. I need to be able to go out and say, I'm done not exercising and, and I've got to start. And do I have to put it on the calendar and make a Wait. date with myself? What do I have to Didn't do? Didn't you tell me that you were going to exercise last year? Mm -hmm. Well, you need mm -hmm. some accountability. Um, you Maybe probably, you need <laughs> to be my exercise coach. Yeah. Well, you, you don't want me as your exercise coach. I can tell you that. <laughs> well, no, just look at me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, and I but, actually, uh, maybe I have to text you and say, yeah, I'm at the gym. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, well, are you actually doing something? That's right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah I mean. Because yeah. we can all just tweak on our phones at the gym. We don't have to actually <laughs> yeah. work, right? Yeah, <laughs> so you check in there. You don't have to even go in, Carm. You can check in. <laughs> I started in last February to lose weight. Because I, I was 37 pounds overweight, and I've taken 30 in this last 10, keeps doing this. It's making me crazy. So I, I've been doing an, the, the workouts I needed because I have a shoulder problem from being a technician hmm. and running a mouse too much. Really? Both of those things. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. um, so the workout piece was hard. I wasn't doing it consistently. So I found the perfect accountability. I have three children who work out with me sometimes at all together or sometimes one by one. And since we got a gym membership together, now they're like, so are we going? Well, when do you want to go? After work. So we all, all four of us go. That's awesome. That's good. And, and now we've even shamed my wife into it. <laughs> so, so she's going uh, on her own. She won't go with us. Mm, I feel really bad. It, my, my daughter um, goes to the gym I think two or three mornings a week, gets up at five at the gym by six, back home at seven showered and out to work and I watch her leave. <laughs> well, go with her. No kidding, Donnie. It's yeah. really easy. And and I, and she'll and keep and so we're all going to be texting them next week. Yeah. And, <laughs> okay. and, and, and I said to her, I says, you know, I got to get up. I, I got I'm already up. And I said, but I got to go with you to the gym. She goes, 
perfect dad. I talked about it, but I didn't create the action item. And shame on me, here I am. I am, I'm saying confession to the, to the world here. I mean, maybe this is the, the impetus that I need to get it done. Because I, yeah, yeah, If she's already got the habit, she'll help she you She has start the it. habit. She just needs to handcuff me and drag me out. Yeah, give her permission. Yeah, I will. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that so much. Um, okay, realistic goals, Rob. I'd love to know that, you know, in, in order to get things done, you really absolutely probably have to have a long-term a short term, uh, some some vision to set some goals because you'll never you'll what, what do you work on your Tuesdays for if you didn't have a plan? That's right. That's right. And you know the topic is overwhelming mountain of information, and not just at these events, but let's face it, there's a lot of different education, good quality education out there. But if we're not organized about how we go through that or education, it's just going to go in one ear and out the other ear, right? So I take the time because I do have access to a lot of different resources. I take the time to put it on a whiteboard and systematically go through that education, as well as setting um, quarterly goals and annual goals. It amazes me how people overestimate what they can get done in a few months and underestimate what they can get done in a year. So, and so what happens is when two quarters go by and they haven't hit those goals, they blow off the goals for the remainder of the year because it doesn't make any sense anyways. So the reality is we, we have to be, our expectations of ourselves have to be realistic and we really should have it in writing. If it's not in writing, it really didn't take place in our heads because we forget. We get our heads, I call it having your head buried in the sand. That means being your, doing your day-to-day -day operation, chasing your squirrels and doing those things that have to take place. Uh, and we get our eyes off the prize, if you will. And, and by having it in writing, we have something to refer back to and measuring our progress. When I think of overload, I think of email. I think of yeah. Facebook. I think of... LinkedIn, shall I go on? Yeah. And we, we, I, we have a level of bariness that we put upon ourselves. Yeah. What have you done to minimize that or just to find the right, you know, gems? I will tell you, well, you know, this is really taking a deep dive, but there's, uh, my email is set up so that certain things that I do receive every day that I do eventually need to look at automatically get tagged and go into certain boxes so that I can look at them when I have time to look at them. Now they don't clutter up my inbox and distract me and become a squirrel because cleaning email an hour is on my to-do list. But if we're not careful, we're doing it every moment of every time we open up our, mm -hmm. our computer. So yeah. that's, that's something we have to be uh, strict about as well because that'll capture you and take you down that river for a long period of time so, if you're so, not careful. So one day you signed up for a newsletter that you thought you'd love three years ago. It <laughs> continues to show up and you, and you hit the delete button each and every time. And How stupid would that be? Yep. Huh? Just unsubscribe. Not, none of yeah. us have ever done that before. Yeah. And, and no. 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 no, <laughs> no none of us. It's <laughs> we're the panel of experts. <laughs> yeah. That, that, right. This morning. That's, that's you know right. how you become an expert? You screw up a lot. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. That's right. Wisdom, baby, squared. That's but good. I think that goes back to, um, you know, like even Rob said, you can't get anything done in the office. The best thing I did is I don't have an office at, at the shop, and I office out of my house. And so that's been fantastic because I don't have the interruptions, and I don't have alerts turned on for email. I don't have alerts turned on for Facebook or any of that because I, I, I will always go back to this. I am not a doctor. Nobody's going to die if they don't talk to me. Yeah. Right. I'm not a doctor. Good point. So it just yeah. so I'm I'm going to be very careful about when I'm looking at email or or even text and it's Yeah. Uh, when you and I did an episode um, uh, 2 years maybe two and a half, two years ago. It, it, there were you know it, I've done so many episodes but <laughs> occasionally I remember some very powerful statements that were said in an episode and and it, two of them comes to mind. Thank you for reminding me. One of them is, what's, you know, is no, if no one's going to die, we're good. <laughs> right? <laughs> I love that. Think about it. Yeah, that's great. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This, this may be tough, but no one's going to die. And it's like, almost like, okay. And the other thing was, it, it, I, I should have mentioned it earlier. Uh, he built this place, put his little tiny office in the back, got this little tiny desk and put it in it. And he came in and he was out front and the desk was way out in the parking lot. And he goes, what's going on? He says, we don't want you here. We don't want you to put your laptop up. We don't want anything. Love that. Yeah. And so, yeah, there was a guy who delegated himself out of the business. Uh, even though you wanted to, uh, they, they push you out. They don't they want did. you there. 
Interesting. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that goes back to, it goes back to trust. And it's, you know, you've got to trust them. They're doing a fantastic job. They do a better job than I would do if I was there running it. And so it's, you know, I learned this long time ago when I was a tech and stuff and an owner and I would go in the shop and fix stuff. And one day one of the techs said, well, you, you just don't have any confidence in us that we can't do it. And I thought I was doing the right thing yeah. because, Hey man, we're just, we got so much work. I'm going to get out there and help the guys out. Then they're going to know that, Hey, I'm willing to jump in and do anything. And, and really what it was is that, okay, you know, they're right. You know, I don't have enough confidence in them. And Sends a great message to, uh, to, 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 to take yourself up and out. Yeah, right? perspective, yeah. How are you dealing with the, the, uh, the overload that comes in uh, in the inbox? Well, so one of the things I do is, is an outbox thing. When I, I've got this little team we call the SDRM team that built the vehicle security program that are all volunteers. They work for automakers and locksmiths and all that, right? So it's a group of eight. This group has seen thousands of emails in the last year. Um, and because I'm working it every day, or at least I was, now I'm out. But what I do is on the very front end of the email, I just say, not important, urgent, when you've got time, whatever. I put a little deal out on the front of it in right. caps, and then, the, then whatever the topic is going to be. So that's how I'm trying to help my team to know, Donnie doesn't need to hear from you right now, or... OMG, I need, an, I need some input. Um, so, so that's my output kind of thing that I try to do when I'm working with my board. You know, I've got this board of 15 that they're all high-powered dudes. Yep. And they don't have time and unless I say, this is really important, can you get back to me? And then they do. So you get that trust over time that if this says it's urgent, I should actually read it. And, and if it's not, you won't make it so. And, th and then as far as the, the, uh, the, the email piece, I, I'm, I'm with you. In fact, I'm about to turn my Facebook account off. I just don't see a reason for it. It's just pointless. It's a time suck. And, and, and it absolutely does not fit into my will it matter tomorrow bucket. Never seems to fit into that. So, uh, but to Rob's point, I've got a lot of filters. So things go off where they need to go. Certain types of emails go certain places. Certain authors go certain places the circular file gotcha. often, right? And so I, I've had to do that because I get two to 300 actionable items a day at NASDAQ, not to mention the Cypher Automotive flow and my family and friends. So you, you just, you have to have lots of filters yeah. so you know what's important now and what's not. Great pointers. Um, social media, you don't need it, huh? I, I don't, in my life, I don't see it being of, of any great use uh, in the business. It's cool to be able to put stuff out. Um, but as far but as you can you know, hire somebody to do right. that, you can, you can't hire somebody though, to see what, you know, somebody that you clicked friend on three years ago and you quite frankly can't remember where they <laughs> live or who they are. that shows up on your phone. Say happy birthday to who is that? That's you know what? Think about how many times a day that comes in and how many days of the week just add up the minutes. Yeah. Yep. Turn it off. Yeah. You got to, you, you got to, I don't think we're saying here that you, you, you not, you don't need to be involved because there's a ton of seminars here and a lot of social media companies here trying to help businesses grow in the face of their customer, telling the right story. But a lot of the grab assing that goes on is almost a waste of a click, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Well, and that's the thing with this. Um, you're almost marketing to the wrong customer. Um, you're not going to get me on Facebook, right? I'm not looking for you on Facebook. Right. So I've always questioned this whole social media is the most important thing in my life kind of mindset that so many businesses have. I'm not trying to marginalize it, but at the same time, I've turned off all of its warnings. I don't want to hear from it unless I'm looking. That's it. <laughs> I'm the same way. Yeah, you're so, you're so right. Guys, any apps that you may use to help keep you more on focus and on task. And one of the things that I think about is anyone use Slack? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Very limited just because of a group we're in. Okay, we groups that you're in. Do you yeah. use it at NASDAQ? We use it for every committee has got their own place. The board of directors has their own place. And all of our calendars push out through Slack. Okay. So um, Scott Brown, you know, who is the Slack master, yeah. set this up for us. So I can't take credit for that. But, um, but it works really well if, 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 you, if you implement it. I've got it at the shop, too. Um, and my guys are sort of hit and miss with whether or not they pay attention to it, but that's because we don't let them haul phones to the car. Uh, yeah, I, I use Slack too. And uh, the best way that I can describe Slack to the audience is it's like a 
private email with an accountability stream where you don't, you, you know, your email may come in in the bottom of the stack at the end of the day. It's 60, it's 60 emails down. And in Slack, it is just about what your area of influence is. I mean, it's, it's you, it's the team you picked, it's the person you want to talk to. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of, if you will, is the master email filter yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Well, great. Hey, in addition to the strict quality remanufacturing steps they take at Jasper, they can actually improve a drivetrain's component original design so that it runs longer and better than when, when it was new. Check out their featured engine and transmission pages, jasperengines.com. Thanks, Jasper, for supporting the Town Hall Academy. Hey, I've had blast. I think we may have changed a few lives out there. I think we've all realized that if we're in the automotive aftermarket, we have AD. D or ADHD, and that's okay. But we were we were we were here to kind of tell you maybe how to learn to deal with it. Um, before I ask you for a final word or two, um, our friend Gonzo's here in the studio. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us, Gonzo. He wants to know, outside of the shop, what's your escape? Mine's the lake. The lake. Being on the water. Yeah, boating. Cool. Hunting. Being outside. All right, outdoors. Well, mine is actually still in the shop. I lock the shop up on the weekends and I build hot rods. Well, I do ah, that too. Cool. I have my own personal shop now. <laughs> yeah, I'd like but, to do uh, that. <clears throat> did you finish writing your book? Yes. My mother is going to shop it for me, so I should be famous very shortly. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, mom. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Rob. Travel. I love, love taking off on the mode home with my wife and spending a few days on the road. Also toys, like these other gentlemen have some cars that, are still at the level I can work on them. They have carburetors, and, yeah, and so we enjoy that. Those are the ones I work on too. Yeah. Great. Any final words? Uh, handling overload, guys. I guess I'll, mine would be that go back to how important is what you're seeing and what will make a difference in both your life and and your business as your first choice as to whether you want to mess with it or not. That, that that's my message today. Strong, pointed, short, simple. Just do it. Just yeah. That's right. Mark. Well, remember, it was when I look at the list. It was do it, delegate it, defer it, or drop it. Yeah. You know, just create your list and great points and, and work the list. Great and points. don't don't let it drive you crazy. Yeah, it's, do something. Just realize you can't do everything, right? Well, that's a great point. Hey, thank you all so much, guys, for being here. Donnie Cipher. From uh, NASDAQ, Executive Officer of NASDAQ. Hey, Donnie, there's a meeting coming up in uh, Charlotte. May 2nd. May 2nd, 9 yeah. to noon? 9 to noon? 9 to noon. And, and, and a golf, if you want to play golf, ETI is having a golf thing right afterwards. So. Cool, and anybody can come, right? Anybody can come. It's free to go to a NASDAQ general meeting. And we are talking about how to, how to. We're not going to whine and bitch. We're going to talk about how do you actually bring a new employee into your business at, at any point position, not just technician. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be all onboarding, Mm -hmm. motor skills, all the things that we've, we know they're out there, but we haven't talked about them. So that's going to be the whole feature of the session. Plus, you know, we'll do our normal reports and stuff. You are so wrapped up in SDRM 2.0, aren't you? Oh yeah. Well, actually, finally, we have a new registry manager who I can't talk about because we're keeping him secret. Okay. But just let me promise you, if you're messing around in our system now, you'll get busted. You will get busted. Okay, nice. cool. And, and, it's a, and it's a fabulous service that NASDAQ is doing. Just explain in, in 30 seconds the value of NASDAQ. If you are doing security operations on a vehicle, which may mean you have to replace a computer, you have to do uh, something on, on the ignition system. If you need key codes, immobilizer codes, or your scan tool requires them, we credential individuals at shops and locksmiths to perform that work and access the OE's websites to get the information to do that. Wow. That's fantastic. 6,000 of them. So not only is he co-owner of Cypher Automotive, <laughs> you're the executive officer of this really great group, and I know you do a lot of great things for the industry, and it's free to join. It is free to be part of NASDAQ. It's not free to be a no. DSP because right. that's time-consuming. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but NASDAQ is absolutely free. Thank you. So uh, thanks, Donnie. Uh, Rob Rossell, Family Auto Service, San Diego, for shop, and author of Addicted to Life, how I went from homeless to extraordinary success and happiness in a short period of time. And serial entrepreneur, Mark Roberts, Shirts Automotive, Shirts Texas. Thanks, guys, for being here. Appreciate your very valuable time here at Vision. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Bye, guys.